Thank you for joining us for Planning Days of Service, a webinar for AmeriCorps VISTA leaders. Days of Service can be a powerful way to bring VISTA members together to have a chance to impact the community in a different way from their regular service. And VISTA leaders are often tasked with planning such service project. So this webinar explores the roles leaders can play along with some important elements of a service project plan. I'm your host, Andy King, a Senior Training Specialist at AmeriCorps VISTA Headquarters, and I'm delighted to introduce our presenter, Malia hadidian Titchener. Malia works as the coordinator of the Student Community Education, sorry, let me say that again, the Student Community Engagement Center at Portland State University. She also leads volunteer management trainings for the Northwest Oregon Volunteer Administrators Association. Before returning to the service coordination within higher education, Malia worked at Hands-On Greater Portland, a local volunteer center, where she first served as an AmeriCorps member and then an AmeriCorps lead before landing a full-time position with the organization. It's always great to have an AmeriCorps alum with us, so welcome, Malia. Thanks so much, Andy. Uh, I'm excited to have this opportunity to talk with you all about the ins and outs of planning for a day of service and how you can support your team as VISTA leaders in putting on meaningful, well-organized, and hopefully fun service opportunities. So let's take a look at what we're gonna cover in this session. We'll start by defining the leader role in planning a service event. We'll then look at how to identify the most important element of a service project plan. And then we'll discuss why each key element should be included in that service project plan. And Malia is gonna walk us through the first piece of this. All right, so let's start quickly by stating what we mean when we say a day of service. So typically a day of service is a set time, often a half or sometimes a full day, when individuals are brought together to volunteer with one or more organizations to address a community need. Service days are often centered around an issue such as food security, or they can be much broader in scope, focusing generally on the value of service or coming together as a community. Often these events are planned around designated national days of service, and for AmeriCorps, that includes Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service in January and the September 11th National Day of Service and Remembrance. At other times of year, it might make more sense to plan a day of service around a specific need in your community or an organization that you're hoping to work with. So as a VISTA leader, your role in planning or supporting days of service may look really different depending on your organization or on a sponsor. You might find yourself as the point person to initiate a day of service project or propose a few ideas, but the decision for how to proceed with the day of service planning could be a collective one with your team working together to determine the who, the what, the when, the where, and the why of a service day and planning the project more collaboratively. As the lead, it's valuable to consider how collaborative planning of the event can help meet the professional development needs of your team. At other times, your role might be primarily to provide support, enthusiasm, and connection to resources for your VISTA members planning separate service days at their individual service sites. And even if you're not doing the service project development yourself, having a solid set of project planning resources and examples available to share with your members will set your teammates up for success it's also going to help you and your team determine what the size and scope of your day of service should be. And it certainly may be the case that you are the primary person designing and leading a project in which your team members engage maybe primarily as participants. This could be the case if you're planning an internal service day, especially earlier in your team members service year, where the primary goal might center around getting to know one another and building connections as a team. Whatever the circumstance, it's helpful to clarify your role and those of your team members early on in the process so that you and your team are on the same page as planning moves forward. So whether you're the primary planner or you're working in collaboration with others, it's important to know that days of service can really look quite different depending on their size and scope. Based on your team's time and capacity, you might decide, hey, it's best for us to plan a small project at a single site, and we're just gonna engage our AmeriCorps team in say, working a shift at the local food bank together. 
In another situation, a larger day of service might be the goal with multiple sites and a dedicated desire to engage the public in the service. If you take the same theme of hunger, a large scale event might bring together dozens of volunteers at a central location for a breakfast kickoff with a keynote speaker and have that followed by volunteers splitting into teams to tackle different service projects for the rest of the day. Both of these types of projects can be very impactful, both for the participants and the organizations they serve, if they are well planned, organized, and have a clear purpose, or what I like to call the why behind the work. So why do we do days of service? I'd love to hear a little bit from you all uh, what has been your experience, um, either as a participant or if you've already started serving with your sites, um, if you've experienced a day of service. All right, so as Malia mentioned, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, and for this activity, we'll use the chat. If you don't see the chat, um, hover your mouse near the bottom of the screen. Uh, you'll see a little speech bubble icon, click that and the chat will open. Um, so if you've been involved in planning a day of service, or if you've been a participant, attended one, um, what do you think was the purpose of that event? Um, and keep in mind, there may be more than one. So tell us in a couple of words what the project was and what the purpose was behind it. And to make sure that everyone can see your responses, uh, please be sure to toggle to everyone before you submit. Right, got a couple responses coming in. Rebuilding a senior citizen's apartment living home. It's a great purpose for getting people out and together. Coat drives to give back and to help the community. Awesome, starting up a recovery center. And yeah, for some folks you haven't done it yet and that's totally fine. Hopefully that's why you're here. <laughs> All right, preparing hurricane right. preparedness kits, golf tournaments. Awesome. Keep them coming yeah, if you've got them. Health awareness. Awesome. So I'm seeing through some of these kind of whys behind the work, there's really like a specific need in the community and you're bringing people together to meet that need. Um, and that's a common thread in what we're going to be talking about next. So many of you offered some great examples of, uh, you know, reasons why you bring people together to do a stay of service. Um, and as we saw earlier, days of service can really vary in that uh, size and scope. And many of those design decisions stem from the actual reasons we want to organize a day of service in the first place. So because determining your event's purpose is kind of key to all of the other elements of your service project planning, and most projects do have both a primary and a secondary why, let's take a moment to review some of the most common reasons why we put on days of service. So most days of service kind of what came up most uh, often in the chat there was that at their core, they're designed to meet a community need through the support of one-time volunteers. So if we've already just identified a specific community need that we want to address, that tends to be the driving force between, behind how we organize our event. Now, sometimes you don't already have a specific need identified, um, but you might want to start with a general theme, like we really want to focus on food security or disaster response, or we're focused on environmental restoration. And that then sets the stage for further identifying a project or a community partner that you might want to engage with. At other times, instead of starting with a need for service, you actually start with a need for relationship building. We might wanna build connections between our members and the greater community, or we might hope to provide an opportunity to come together as a VISTA team and engage in something meaningful as a group. Either of these relationship-based needs can be big motivators behind day of service design. Service days can also be great opportunities for volunteers to deepen their understanding of key community issues and the work being done to solve them, and they can encourage the development of new partnerships, increase your program visibility, and provide an easy way for people to get involved with your organization. So I'm gonna look, uh, let's look at one example from my own work just to think about this. 
So two summers ago, uh, my team at Portland State University received an email from a city representative that was interested in getting students engaged in tackling the issue of trash in our downtown core. So in this case, our primary why came from a distinct ask from the community to our team to help the city tackle a specific issue. But simultaneously, we'd already been thinking about doing a service project at the start of the school year to help build connections on campus among students returning in person for the first time in over a year. This was coming back kind of post COVID lockdown and to help them feel more connected and have a sense of belonging to the downtown neighborhood where our campus is located. As we began thinking more about the event, however, a third why arose for us. So trash had become considerably more noticeable during the pandemic as services in our business districts were reduced or shut down. And also many folks in our community lost housing and ended up homeless. Our team was really concerned that some participants might be quick to blame the trash problem on houseless populations in our downtown area without really understanding the incredibly difficult nature of disposing of trash when you don't have access to resources like trash pickup. You often have to rely on single use plastics. So our team decided it wanted to incorporate an educational angle into the project to bring attention to these issues. So while our project might have started in response to a voiced community need, it did morph to include a number of different whys that drove its creation. This next example is another one for my work with students, but the project had a very different scope. Uh, let's look at this one a little bit more as a case study and see if you can determine what you think our primary and secondary whys were in planning this smaller day of service event. All right, so in this project, a group of student leaders who would eventually be tasked with leading their own service projects, they went out on a small day of service project at the Children's Book Bank which offers regular book cleaning shifts to interested groups. Once there, they sat at tables together and repaired some gently used children's books to be re-gifted to children at a local Head Start classrooms. The books had been previously donated and they needed some love to make sure they looked as good as new. The team took public transport together to and from their campus. And while traveling to the project, they talked about their memories of reading as children, and they learned about local literacy rates and the impact of having books in the home on those reading rates. On the ride back, they debriefed the project's strengths and challenges and what they'd learned that they could apply to their own service projects. So, based on this example, take a moment to respond in the chat. What do you think the primary why is for this event? And if you can think of one, what is a secondary why? So uh, again, we'll use the chat for that. Uh, I look forward to seeing your responses there. All right, so maybe this one is tougher than uh, than we thought. Uh, so we're looking for either a primary or secondary why for this service project of preparing books for kids at the Children's Book Bank. All right, so now I see some of them coming in. Um, one, a need for help in the community uh, to increase literacy rates and also to educate about literacy and I guess the issues around literacy uh, increasing literacy uh, and networking. Um, great, and maybe I'll let you uh, take a look and see if you notice any themes or or commonalities coming up out of these ideas. Yeah, definitely. Seeing a lot of good stuff coming through here um, and can definitely share a little bit more about our whys. So we were definitely excited to introduce students to the Children's Book Bank. It's an organization we've known for a long time time and we wanted to help meet their mission of literacy. Um, but interestingly, the primary purpose of our day of service in this case was more around, I see this uh, word networking coming through here, it was about a team building opportunity for us. So that was the first initial reason why we created this. Um, it was going to be an opportunity for our student leaders to really introduce them to one another and to what a well-run service project looked like so they could learn from the experience before being tasked with creating their own later in the year. 
Um, so rather than trying to plan an entire service project ourselves, we really identified a local organization that we knew, that we knew was working towards a good cause, and that had a mission that aligned with the interests of a lot of our, our students. And then we focused our energy on planning our transit time to and from the event to really focus on that networking piece, that team building um, with questions, thoughtful reflection, and an opportunity for students to importantly debrief the project's strengths and challenges since the education piece was important as we wanted to, them to see what a good project looked like. So in this case, our primary why was guided more by our relationship building and learning goals than it was by a specific community need, but we wanted to make sure that the work we were doing was meeting an actual need and we were able to help the Children's Book Bank meet literacy uh, and increase literacy in our community in a way that worked for them. All right, so once we've identified our primary and secondary whys uh, for the projects that we wanna do, the next step in our initial planning is to answer four more questions. All right, so we wanna think about how those whys can align with the time, the capacity, the resources, and the relationships we have to work with and where we might be lacking. So doing a quick survey of our who, our what, our when, our where can help us determine the shape and scope of our event. And then from there, we'll tackle our how. Note that why is in the center of all of these decisions. So as you begin to explore each of these questions, Continue to ask yourself how they connect back to your identified goals. All right, so as we begin to dig into the who, what, when, and where of your days of service, it might actually be helpful for you to follow along uh, using the initial planning framework resource that can be found on page one and two of the planning templates handout that was shared kind of at the beginning. I don't know if that wants to get popped into the chat again for anybody who might have missed it earlier. Um, this is a resource that you and your planning team can use as you walk through important initial considerations for your day of service plan. And just a heads up, I know it was mentioned earlier, but when you do click on the link, you might be prompted to log into the Vista campus before templates will download. Um, so we'll briefly cover each question and what to consider in the next few slides. And if you do um, uh, have that template open, feel free to jot down ideas for a project you're already considering as we go. And it looks like that just uh, got popped into the slide for folks who want to access it. All right, so moving on to the next slide, let's identify who. It's important that we first understand our audience before digging into other logistical elements like place, time, and specific activities. So who do you want to partner with? Who's going to benefit from the project? Who do you want to actually participate in the project? Who might you approach for funding if you don't have the funding to do this on your own? Do your team members, do you have team members ready to kind of step up into those leadership roles? And is there additional expertise that you might need to, rec uh, to recruit for in order to make the event happen? It can be helpful here to revisit your whys for any partnership or relationship building goals you identified to help determine who to include and how you want to include them. If your primary goal is to build connections and cohesion with your AmeriCorps team, maybe you decide to limit your participants just to your team rather than opening it up to the wider public. So hand in hand with identifying our who is to identify our what. Um, what can be done in the course of a half day or a day long service event to address your identified why? The answer to this question by and large is gonna be determined in collaboration with your chosen community partners. So rather than deciding on a specific idea, like, hey, let's do a book drive, and then shopping that idea around for who might need it, it's way better to reach out to community partners first and ask them what their needs are and how a done in a day project could best support those needs. You might learn that a literacy organization is actually overflowing with book donations, does not need more donations, but they could really use a team to help them sort and organize their donations room. It can often feel really exciting to come up with a brand new idea and brainstorm ways it could help the community. And there's nothing saying you can't go big and creative if you have the energy and capacity to do so, but just ensure that your project is meeting an actual rather than an assumed community need. The biggest thing I encourage folks to consider when deciding on a project is not to recreate the wheel if you don't have to. If there's an existing project out there, 
that could be amplified by your efforts. It can be just as impactful, if not more so, to join in and contribute energy to a project already in progress, rather than pulling something together from scratch. So as you begin to home in on your partnership and project ideas, then the question of when and where naturally follows if it wasn't already determined from the start. So when thinking about when the project should take place, if the date isn't already set in stone, go back to that why. What is the need you're trying to fulfill and when would a project make the most impact? For example, a winter coat drive might work best sometime in the fall as folks begin to think about the start of colder weather, whereas a community garden preparation day might provide the best support in early spring to prep the garden for the planting season. It's also valuable to revisit your who to make sure that the time you choose will work for the folks you want to be there. So if your project is designed just for your AmeriCorps team, maybe a middle of the work week project works great. If you're hoping to engage the public, weekends could be preferable. And if you're helping with a schoolyard beautification project, it may only be possible during school breaks or weekends when kids and teachers aren't using the grounds. If you want to do, say, an outdoor painting project, ask yourself what the likelihood of stormy weather is and how much daylight you have to work with. Finally, while national days of service may seem locked in on the timing front, it's still important to do some research to figure out what else is already happening during those days. So does your service project have to fall the morning of MLK Day itself if there's already a huge speaker series planned for that day in your community? Maybe you can host your event the day before or after, or even the following weekend, depending on what makes the most sense for everyone involved. At this point in the process, you might have already got a good sense of where the project is going to take place if you've identified a community partner host and have your project scope. But even within a specific site, there are details to consider. So will the volunteers be centered in one location at the site, or are there going to be multiple projects going on simultaneously? How accessible is the location? And what transit options might exist to help folks get there if they don't have a car? Is there a space where you can gather the group at the start or at the end of the project for either opening introductions or a closing reflection? So many of these details can be further honed if you do a site visit, which I highly recommend, but it can be helpful to start thinking upfront about your location considerations, especially around accessibility. This initial brainstorm will help give you a good list of questions to consider during any future site visit or walkthrough of the project area. So let's put these together to see how these questions might play out in practice. Earlier, I gave the example of the trash pickup event that my team was tasked with organizing. Um, so as a reminder, our guiding whys were, we wanted to tackle the issue of trash downtown. We wanted to build connection among participants and a sense of belonging to the neighborhood. And we wanted to build awareness of the challenges of waste disposal for our houseless population. So from those whys, we began to flesh out the structure of our project. For the who, we identified that our student staff would help plan, that the student body was our target audience, and our main community partner would be an organization called Solve that really specializes in trash collection events and could train our staff and help provide supplies. We also determined that we wanted to include information and resources around other organizations that work with our homeless individuals in the downtown area to help participants build more awareness about other ways they could get involved. As we determined the what, our primary focus was on the service itself. We just really wanted to make sure volunteers could spend ample time picking up trash in the area. But we also wanted to make sure we could meet our goal of building connections between students. So we organized them into small groups. We added a boxed lunch to our closing reflection and really encouraged folks to stick around, share a meal and connect after the project wrapped up. Finally, we started the project with a little education around the issues in advance to meet our goal of building awareness. We decided it'd be easiest to engage group leaders in facilitating small group orientations with just, you know, 10 to 12 volunteers on both the environmental impact of microplastics pollution, as well as the challenges of that waste disposal for our houseless neighbors before they set off to pick up trash in the community. So that answered the question of our who and our what in our initial project planning, but what do you think the, we might have needed to consider when thinking about our when for this litter cleanup example? And while we knew we would host the event downtown near our campus, what other specifics do you think our team might have wanted to keep in mind as we finalized our location? All right, so invite you to take a moment um, and using the prompts uh, in the initial project planning framework, 
Share your ideas for what you think Malia's team might have considered when they were choosing a date and time for their cleanup and for confirming their location. So again, we have the um, a project plan that you can download a copy of and uh, you can take a look in that framework. Um, or we've got the questions here on the screen. What are important considerations for the when and the where components of this litter cleanup example? Um, so I see we've got a bunch of responses coming in already. I don't want to give it away because some of you may be coming up with similar ideas, but uh, yeah, some, some patterns emerging immediately. Definitely. Yeah, some of these are great considerations. Absolutely things that we thought about. Um, for our timing, uh, we definitely, um, we intentionally plan the event to fall the Saturday after our biggest outreach fair for new and returning students so that we'd kind of have that immediate opportunity for folks to engage in service. We could catch them before the school year got too hectic, but also uh, weather for sure. Um, we're here in the Pacific Northwest. It rains a lot the farther we get into fall and we really did wanna have a chance for decent weather. Although we were prepared for rain or shine. So weather is definitely a consideration. Yes, safety, we wanted to do it during the daytime hours. Um, and location wise, it made the most sense for us to start our um, own, start kind of at our own campus and plan multiple different loops for our groups to take. So they wouldn't overlap territory. Everybody would end up back on campus where we could serve lunch. And then we did scope out the routes in advance so we could determine where uh, the most trash was located. And also that we had at least one route that was designated around streets that had accessible curb cuts so that anyone joining us uh, using a wheelchair or a stroller could participate. So definitely a lot of the things that you came up with, things that our team was thinking about. Um, so for folks who find Kind of thinking through examples helpful we do have that filled out version of an initial planning framework included in the sample plan handout that was shared so you can actually see what our team's planning process looked like um, and refer to that as you start your own um, own plans so um all right so determining our why answering our who what when and where questions those give us the foundation of our day of service plan uh, but now the question comes down to the details. How do we actually make it happen? What are some of the tools and best practices that can help guide our team in creating a well-planned and executed event? So as we began to think about the logistics of planning our service days, it can really help be helpful to put ourselves back in the shoes of like, when were we volunteers attending event? And remember those details. What made the service projects that we've been to work and what didn't? All right, so as Malia suggested, we've got an activity. Uh, I'd like you to do a little bit of reflection thinking back on your own experience. And so I invite you to think about a service project where you participated as a volunteer. And in that, what is one element you remember that helped the project to feel well organized, enjoyable, or impactful? I'm sure there were a lot of things, but for this purpose of this, if you can um, think of one, um, and if you can think of more, you can uh, drop those in as well. Uh, again, we'll use the chat, so uh, pop those memories in the chat so we can see what it is that sticks with us. What elements of a project really make that service project feel like a success? I'll give you just a moment to get your thoughts together and drop those into the chat. Uh, and please, of course, remember to toggle to everyone so that your colleagues will be able to see your responses. All right, so we've got a couple of ideas shared so far. Um, first of all, support from the supervisor, uh, economic, social, and emotional support, um, the organization um, that uh, this individual was volunteering for, 
distribution of neighborhood food. Uh, I volunteer with controlling traffic and giving out boxes of food. Um, all right, making sure everyone had a way to get to the place by offering a carpool. All right, so organization there as well. Uh, having tools and resources available to make it succeed. Providing popsicles and water on a hot day. Make sure everyone stays hydrated. Right, so anticipating what the needs might be of the volunteers, you know, based on the location, the weather, and other conditions. Uh, all right, creating information to distribute related to a project to help the elderly and children. Um, oh, providing two different time slots to do an event, like a beach cleanup. So a real variety of ideas here. Maria, anything stand out for you? Yeah, I'm definitely seeing a lot, you know, around accessibility, like are there carpools offered? Are there different times available for folks to come out? Thinking about those little details like popsicles on a hot day can go a long way to turning somebody from feeling grumpy about being out in the heat to, to being totally fine with it. So I love all of these. And yeah, really just the tools and resources available to make it successful. Really having thought about that in advance is the thing that you wanna do. Um, and that's kind of the next piece is the fleshing out those nitty gritty details of how to turn this just general project idea into a reality that you can actually make happen successfully with a group of folks coming out um, that wanna help out. So that's what we're gonna dig into next. So a well-organized and enjoyable and impactful event with all of those different components that you came up with in the chat um, often does require a lot of legwork up front to ensure a smooth experience on the day of. So considering your how is probably just as important as all of the earlier questions combined because it's gonna be your bridge between the idea and an actionable reality. And the first step in thinking through your how is identifying your resources. What resources do you have at your disposal and what gaps exist? So staff capacity considerations, those are a huge piece of the puzzle, right? So who's on deck to help plan and promote? How much time can you each realistically give? What are the different roles you need to have filled? How much time do you even have before the event date? You might have a great idea and you're like, but that would be three weeks away and we can't do it in that amount of time. Uh, what supplies do you already have on hand? What budget do you have to procure additional supplies or offer food or other needed items? And finally, it's incredibly helpful to think about what resources might already exist to help guide your planning. So has this kind of project been done before? Again, this idea of having an existing model or blueprint you can work from uh, can be super helpful, or is it something you're gonna be starting completely from scratch? So you might have to do a lot more work up front. So as we return to that litter pickup example, um, here's a quick sketch of just kind of our initial how brainstorm. So we thought about capacity and capacity wise, we were heading into the busiest time of our year for our office. And for my role specifically, I was juggling onboarding new staff, orienting new student leaders, and just generally trying to get everyone up to speed in the weeks leading up um, and starting our fall term. So normally this is not a time I wanted to take on additional projects. And because the staff would be new, I'd have to take on the bulk of the initial planning and project management. So my first reaction when we got this request from the city was like, no, it's just not gonna to work out timing wise, I don't have the capacity. But then I was like, well, wait a second, this would give an opportunity for my incoming staff to have a really great hands on learning experience getting to know their new positions because they'd be having to plan service opportunities throughout the year. And it would give our new student leaders a chance to step into leadership roles really early on. Both of these are things that ultimately met training needs I was going to have to meet anyway. So it ended up feeling worth it to kind of put in the extra time early on during a busy, hectic season uh, to make it to make it work. Um, in terms of the actual roles, uh, as we were thinking through what needed to be done, because I had a brand new staff team, I did take on the project management and primary outreach roles, but my staff were able to get trained up to support outreach once they came on board, and they took on registration, which was great. And then both uh, the staff and the student leaders could be trained up in the week before the event to serve as our kind of team leads on the day of the event. So they got to build on skills they were excited to hone in their new roles um, and come on board. So I knew I was gonna have a team helping me on the day of and in the week leading up. I ended up managing food for the event, but eh, I probably could have delegated that if I'd planned ahead a little differently. 
In terms of timeline, the request from the city came about two months before our event took place. But at that time, I was the only staff member working in our office, and it took about a month to confirm that we could partner with our organization, Solve, to get the supplies that we needed. So most of the planning came in like four weeks prior to the event. It was, it was crunch time. I had about three weeks to get my new staff trained and involved in the planning process, and only about one week with my new student leaders to get them trained to help as day of lead. So timeline was tight, but the learning potential felt worth it. In terms of supplies and budget, when the request from the city came in, I knew I had zero budget for supplies, but we already had a relationship with this organization who could lend us trash pickers, safety vests, sharps containers, and bags. So we'd at least be able to do at minimum the service project of the portion. But we did decide we wanted to feed feed our volunteers. Um, and luckily, we learned that the president's office was providing some mini grants for welcome week projects that took place that first week of classes, kind of as an incentive to engage students back on campus after pandemic isolation. So we were able to get a grant to help pay for snack bags for volunteers to serve during our wrap up reflections. So those were some of the considerations that our team kind of answered as we were thinking through the how. Um, and asking yourself that initial round of how questions can really help you begin to home in on your project scope and feasibility. From there, you'll then build out your plan. So we didn't have the exact blueprint for how to do this project, but we were able to consult with a community partner who'd done a lot of cleanups. They had a lot of best practices to share. And then we did turn to a handy set of resources to help guide us in figuring out all of those little nitty gritty details. So we're going to share those resources next in hopes they help you as much as they helped us. All right, so as you consider your team's capacity and the roles that may help divvy out different responsibilities, it's helpful to kind of have a framework to work off of. So on page three of your packet, you'll find a list of common roles that you and your team might consider filling to ensure that different elements of the planning and day of responsibilities are covered. Now, this list has a wide range of roles with a varying level of responsibility. So from site liaison, who's talking to a community partner, to the logistics wrangler managing food, to the person taking point on fundraising or flyer design, some of these roles are completed up front. Some of them take place kind of throughout the duration of planning the project. And then many pertain primarily to the day of. Um, the list itself is not exhaustive, but it does hit on some roles that sometimes get missed. We often realize at the end of an event that we forgot to tell somebody to take pictures, for example. Um, so it does provide a good starting place in thinking about delegation of responsibilities. As a VISTA leader, remember, it's part of your role to support your team members' professional development. And days of service can be the perfect opportunity to strike up those conversations about your team members' strengths, their learning goals, and their areas of growth. So where do they feel their strengths lie? What do they want to learn? What have they said they want to work on in their professional development plans to develop future job skills? Roles can really vary in responsibility and commitment. So consider how the day of service planning process can engage your team in identifying and selecting roles that play to their strengths and help them hone their skills. In tandem with a list of possible roles your team might take on is the consideration of the distinct tasks that often make up those roles and when and who will do them. Uh, so pages four to seven of your packet uh, provide a helpful set of project development checklists and an accompanying timeline template to help your team create an organized action plan that will help bring your project to life. So the checklists and timelines are divided into three sections before the project, during the project, and after, which is often gets forgotten, um, to help you really think about when different elements come into play. So the initial checklist you'll see serve as a guide to help think through some of the most common elements to consider in each stage of your planning, but they're not exhaustive and they won't necessarily pertain to every type of project. So you can use them to begin your brainstorm, but ultimately it's gonna be up to your team to determine what tasks should appear on your timeline and who's gonna be assigned to each role. You may look at a timeline template like this and immediately try and fill it out in order. Like, okay, what do we have to do first? But I encourage you to take a pause and instead try the backwards planning method of organizing your tasks. Um, backwards planning has you start really thinking about all of your event day tasks. So starting with the day of 
and then work your way backwards day by day and week by week to flesh out what steps you need to do to prepare for each event day task. As you start working backwards, you might realize you need to adjust your time frame or reconsider your scope. So for example, during our trash pickup event, we really wanted to include a, a fun trivia portion to get students kind of connected to downtown and get to know it through fun and historical tidbits. But once we started filling out our backwards timeline, we're like there is no way that we have time to develop something like that in addition to everything else that we've got to, to plan for. So um, we decided instead that you know during our pod leader orientation, where we were training up the, the day of leads, we would just encourage our group leaders to share some of their favorite spots in the downtown area as they walked around and, you know, attempting to hit the same goal, but with less work involved up front. If you realize as you dig into your planning that you do need to adjust your ideas, but you're not really sure how, go back to that why. So remind yourself of the goals you were hoping to accomplish and explore ways that you might be able to reach those with the time and resources you actually have. However you choose to organize your tasks, make sure it's something that your entire team has access to. So the um, uh, worksheet that we passed to you, we had that as a Google Doc that our entire team could access and that was really helpful. Um, of course, there are more involved project management systems like Asana or Trello that can be used to track one's progress and timelines and reminders, but the best system is the one that people will actually use. So consider that when choosing your organizational tool. Backwards planning can also be a great exercise for you and your team to engage in together, to think through what needs to be done, to map out the different tasks each person will be taking on um, and when those tasks need to be done. And this is a skill that a lot of jobs require. Um, it, this exercise kind of offers that opportunity for your team to practice it together while building a shared understanding and buy-in uh, amongst your planning team. So finally, once you've created your timeline of tasks, don't let it languish. That's always the thing that happens. Everybody creates their lists and then they, they go to die. Um, so keep it handy during your team planning meetings to really help ensure that those key elements are not forgotten, that you continue to update it as new things come to light, and really make space to check in with all team members on how things are going and whether anyone needs support. So looking at a blank template can be daunting. Uh, so again, to help, you can find in the chat that sample plan, um, and that is, it has a fleshed out project development checklist and timeline based on our litter cleanup in case it's helpful for you to kind of see what that, that tool was uh, actually used for. All right. Finally, I want to point you one more resource that you'll find in your packet uh, focused on writing a good project description. So having worked at a volunteer center for nearly a decade, I can tell you many folks underestimate the value of writing a solid project description and a recruitment blurb designed to inspire engagement. You might have all of these ideas in your head, but if you don't put it on paper in a way that other people can understand, it's a missed opportunity. So if you're going to be recruiting external participants, you do need to focus on getting the attention of those in the community that would want to get involved. So this template walks you through some of the elements to include, but I'll highlight a few tips here. First, your project title. Consider using verbs in the title rather than nouns to draw folks in. So an event called Prep Books for Kids with the Children's Book Bank, it's a little more active in nature, draws people in more than just book cleaning event. Second, make sure your first sentence draws your reader in, connects to the why of the event. You might start with a question. Hey, love reading? Want to make sure young kids get the opportunity to own books? Or maybe you start with a pertinent fact that relates to the issue. So for children in poverty, one of the biggest obstacles to literacy development is the scarcity of books in the home. That grabs people and brings them in rather than starting with details like the date or the location or all of that stuff. Start with your why. From there, you can then expand on that why and then connect to the practicalities of the event, the who, the what, the when, and the where. Even if you're keeping the project just among your VISTA team, it's still helpful to put together a shareable project description to get folks excited about participating and ensure that everyone is on the same page about what's happening. So you can check out that project description template for more guidance on the types of details you might want to include, and also what you might want to highlight when putting together those catchy recruitment blurbs. 
So these are just uh, a couple of the resources that I've found most useful when planning days of service with my teams. And I do hope that they will help you as well as you embark on your own day of service projects. Yeah, thank you so much, Maria, for sharing uh, those resources, the tools. Um, I think they're gonna be very helpful as well as the tips. So now for everyone, um, we have another activity here, give you a chance to practice what you just heard. Um, and so using your knowledge of the project description template that uh, Maria was just showing us, I'd like you to try turning a passive service project title into a more active title. Uh, so we have three options for you on the screen to choose from. One is a downtown litter cleanup, the other uh, lunchtime meal prep, and the third is garden work party. So those are all sort of noun heavy uh, titles. See if you can uh, turn those uh, into something a little more catchy, a little more um, you know, eye catching and, and uh, attractive um, by using action words or verbs to make that title more engaging. So think about that. When you've got it, drop it into the chat, share with everyone so that we can see it. And again, as an example, remember Malia shared, uh, instead of book cleaning event, turn that into prepare books for kids uh, with the children's book bank. All right, so we'll give you a few, uh, half a minute or so to come up with your own. All right, so we've got some great ideas coming in here. Um, Malia, any thoughts about uh, some of the creativity that we've seen? Yeah, I'm really enjoying seeing some of the the kind of fun, like emphasizing the fun, come party in the garden. Um, you know, let's help make our planet become green again, using those action verbs that really invite people in to do something action filled um, tends to grab people's attention. And then, you know, you can always have that subheading that includes other uh, other details as well. So I'm seeing some fun ones coming through. Let's cut up nutrition, meals and deals, networking with a twist. Um, yeah, these are some great ones. Food is life. Love it. Um, up litter downtown. Let's keep our downtown clean. So these are great. I think it's always helpful to give yourself just a couple minutes to like take a, a boring title and see if you can spruce it up, make it a little bit more exciting um, as you think about your outreach. So thank, thanks everybody. That was great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, echo Malia there, uh, some really clever ideas shared here. So thank you for participating in the activity. And now I have one more for you. Uh, so this activity is a little bit different. Uh, it gives you a chance to see how well you've been following along. Um, you'll see a question and a pop-up on your screen. Um, it's also showing here on the slide. So we want you to take a moment to identify the most important guiding element 
of planning a service project? Is it setting the date for the event, identifying the desired outcome for the project, writing a compelling project description, or is it identifying someone to manage fundraising? So uh, make your selection in the poll and then click submit. Um, and we'll give you just a moment and take a look at the results. All right, it looks like uh, a little more than half of you have responded, so a few more of you out there. I'll give you just a few more seconds to make your selection and uh, be sure to click submit, otherwise your response doesn't come through. All right, so uh, we'll go ahead and close the poll and take a look at the response. Uh, so you can see here that um, most of you, 82% of you, got the correct answer, which is, of course, identifying the desired outcome. So, uh, and the reason for that, of course, is um, the desired outcomes is another way of saying the why of the project, and that's where we started our presentation today. So thank you for participating in that activity. Um, and back over to Malia for a few recommendations for further study. Yeah, so as we wrap up today, there are a few resources that you'll be walking away with. Um, the first is the packet you've already received. Hopefully everybody's been able to log in and download that. Um, that has some of the how-to tools and resources that my team has found most helpful when planning those days of service. Um, within that, we did talk about the example project roles, the project development checklist uh, and timeline template, as well as the project description template, but you'll also find a helpful recruitment message worksheet in there, as well as a site visit checklist uh, included in the packet, so I encourage you to check those out as well. Um, the second one you've also received in the chat already, and that's the sample project plan. Uh, so it's the same format as the how to, um, but it's actually completely filled out. It's what my team used when we were putting together our litter cleanup event. So those resources can be, um, you know, helpful to look at how somebody else has used it. And again, they can be filled out with as much or as little detail as you like, but just seeing how they've been put to use by another team is sometimes useful. Um, the third resource is a very helpful one created by a group of VISTA leaders a few years back. It's called the National Days of Service Project Ideas Guide, which has specific project templates that you can use for different kinds of events. So remember that bit about not recreating the wheel if you don't have to? That's what this is for. I highly recommend checking out some of the ideas and the project templates in this guide as you consider what might work for you. Um, and then finally, a number of AmeriCorps teams have voiced interest in incorporating uh, the Juneteenth federal holiday into their day of service planning, uh, commemorating the ending of slavery in the United States. There haven't been as many national resources created or specifically around Juneteenth service projects yet, since the idea was only federally recognized in 2021. But it's important that any Juneteenth event planning team understands the important history and tradition behind this holiday and aligns uh, your event planning and celebrations accordingly. So you'll just find some useful resources uh, to start your research if you're not as familiar with the Juneteenth holiday's origins or how it's traditionally been celebrated in Black communities across the country. So we wanted to include that as well, since that is our newest federal holiday. Um, these last two resources uh, are included at the end of your slide packet rather than as a separate resource. So if you scroll down to the end of your slide packet, that's where you'll find them. So as you move forward with your day of service planning in the coming year, I really hope that you find these resources useful and that today's training has given you some helpful tools and ideas to support your service event planning efforts. So thanks so much for being here. All right, and thank you, Malia. Um, really, really great information. Um, we're gonna get to the Q&A in just a moment, um, but first I invite you all to complete a short evaluation of this webinar. Your feedback will help us make these sessions the most useful for you and other readers. The survey is probably already open in your browser window behind the Zoom, 
But if not, the link is also available in the chat. And if you're on a mobile device, you will need to use that link in the chat. So you might want to click it now before the session ends. Um, all right. And so we, we do want to get to your questions, see if you have any questions for Malia. Um, and for the Q&A, we're going to use the chat feature. So if you, um, if you have any questions, now is your time. You can drop it into the chat. Um, and uh, I'm guessing you all have it open, but if somehow the chat has closed after the poll, you can um, go back to the bottom of your screen and click on the speech bubble icon to get that chat window to come back. All right, I'm not seeing any questions yet, um, but, but one still may be coming in. Uh, I do want to um, say just a couple of things about uh, the VISTA campus. So we are continuing to add resources there and these materials um, that you've seen so far um, uh, are part of the VISTA campus and we'll be posting the recording there um, by tomorrow and all these resources will be attached. So if you wanna go back, listen to any part of the presentation, you're welcome to do that. And if uh, you have a colleague who wasn't able to make it today, you might also point them to that recording. So, um, uh, and as you can see on the screen, we uh, have our next webinar coming up September 21st. Uh, it's on helping members report accomplishments. Um, and uh, so of course, reporting is part of all of our responsibilities. And sometimes it's not the most favorite part of our role, but um, as a VISTA leader, you're probably involved in supporting your members. And so we'll hear some ideas about uh, how you can do that effectively and make reporting less of a burden for your members. Uh, again, that's on Thursday, September 21st. Watch your inbox for an invitation for that event. And we hope to see you there. I want to again thank our presenter, Malia Hadidian Titchener from Portland State University, for such an important, uh, informative presentation. Thanks also to Elizabeth Floyd and Bethany DeSoblin for their instructional design assistance, and our producer, Stephen Gray. Most importantly, thank you for being here. This concludes our webinar. We hope to see you again.